This Star Trail composite consists of 10 two-minute exposures shot at Joshua Tree National Park. And guess what? I did not stack these in a computer program. I didn't use Photoshop. I didn't use Star Stacks. I didn't use anything but my camera body. It was all done in the field. And if you own a Pentax, you may already have this superpower. I'm going to show you how you can get a shot like this using the Pentax system. And it's a heck of a lot easier than you might think. Hey, I'm Tim Little. I'm a nighttime landscape artist living on the East Coast of Massachusetts. And this is not going to be a long video because it does not need to be. The two things you need to bring to your star stacking party is your Pentax body. This is the K1. This is my go-to night photography camera and an intervalometer. Now, I know I have said before, I hardly ever use these things because a lot of the Pentax bodies have a built-in intervalometer, but there's a specific reason I am using one and it will make your workflow a little bit easier and give you some more flexibility. So you're going to want one of these. So why not just do a long exposure? Why not just do a 20 minute exposure and call it a day? The issue with that is if you have these same conditions where you've got some moonlight coming in, you are going to have compounding moonlight for that entire time. And besides having a very bright and possibly overblown foreground, you're going to have a lot of light moving across the sky and that's going to get rid of a lot of your stars. So that's why we like to do these composite shots because you can take multiple exposures and your overall finished product will not be any brighter than any one of those exposures. So if you're doing a two minute shot, that is as bright as your final product will be assuming no other weird variables like somebody walking through your shot with a flashlight or a lightning bolt. The first thing you'll need to decide is your exposure setting. So for this particular shot, I went with two minutes F 7.1 at ISO 800. As far as conditions went, this was about five nights after the last full moon. So the moon wasn't incredibly bright and also it was just rising. The great thing about this time of the moon cycle is that you have just enough ambient light to bring natural lighting in your foreground, but you're still starting to see a lot more stars come out than you would have had closer to the full moon. The next thing I did was switch to bulb mode and move from single frame to multi exposure. At this point, you are presented with two parameters to change. The first is your composite mode. The option you want is bright. That is the option that will build in only new light to the image. So if it recognizes that you already have light in your foreground from the moon, it's not going to compound more light on top of that. It will see that the stars have moved and write those new stars in, hence connecting your trails. You do not want additive because that is what's going to give you an incredibly overexposed shot under moonlit conditions. Essentially, it's like having your camera open the entire time that you are intending to create star trails. An average will not work here. So bright is the mode. The last thing in camera is how many shots do you want? How long do you want those star trails? I typically settle on 20 to 25 minutes. I find that that gives you the right amount of star trails that looks nice, but doesn't mean that you have to spend your entire night capturing star trails. That's all you have to do in camera. Now plug in your intervalometer, set your exposure time, the minimum amount of time between exposures and the number of exposures and hit the switch and let it fly. When you're done, the camera will composite those shots for you and you will see your star trails. So why would you need one of these if the intervalometer is built into the Pentax system? Well, it turns out that there is a limitation in the firmware. If you want to combine compositing mode and intervalometer together, it's only available in manual. And as you know, in manual mode, the maximum amount of exposure time you have access to is 30 seconds. I'm someone who likes to leverage time to collect the light for me. I don't like to crank up my ISO. I don't like to really widen my aperture depending on the lens. So I need that extra time, which means I need bulb mode and my trusty intervalometer. In fact, that's the only reason I still carry one of those. But hey, if you don't mind increasing your ISO and widening your aperture, you may be able to get away with just 30 seconds depending on conditions, in which case you wouldn't need one of those. And it would be a true cable-free experience. I hope you find this helpful. Give it a try. See how it works out for you. It's super easy and happy star trailing.